So what happens when you have a modern retelling or reimagining of classic films such as The Ten Commandments, The Greatest Story Ever Told, and Ben-Hur meets the likes of Do the Right Thing, Friday, and The Passion of the Christ? Well, you have a new biblical comedy drama by the name of The Book of Clarence, and we're here to talk about it. What is going on, movie fans? Before we get into my thoughts on the Book of Clarence, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Was this a film you all were excited to check out, but more importantly, once you've seen it, did you enjoy it? What worked, what didn't work? What were some of your favorite moments, least favorite moments, and what were your overall thoughts of this film? Let's talk about it in the comments below. So for me personally, I am really becoming a huge fan of the songwriter, music producer, and now two-time director, James Samuel. What I really like about his work as a director is how he has style and flair and his use of camera work and his soundtrack and score is so memorable. Now, I personally believe his background in music, songwriting, producing, and also composing his own films now really lends his creative juices to creating this aesthetically a pleasing, visual, distinctive style that flows so beautiful. And his way of incorporating his music brings this very cool rhythm into his direction, resulting in some pure energy and just straight up great entertainment. I can't think of any other way to describe it, but there's just a coolness flowing through this film because his voice and his ability to wreck this story and to make it a captivating viewing experience. I'm such a big fan of his work and how big his movies feel, but also the time periods he's interested in and the inclusion of incredibly talented actors. I'm very excited to see his path continue to grow as a great director. And just another side note, seeing black people on horses, being cowboys, being outlaws, and now in this film, like we were there during those times but you know have it be in Hollywood you don't really see us in those lights so I love his inclusion I love his storytelling ability and I love the swagger he brings to his films but also just as much praise to the hair and makeup team the costume design the production team really putting us in that time period like all the production of film was just fire but speaking of fire, we got to talk about these performances. I really enjoyed the entire ensemble cast, whether it was Anna Dope, David Oyelowo, Tiana Taylor, Michael Ward, Alfie Woodard, Marianne Jean Patisse, Nicholas Pinnett. And I got to say, I feel so old seeing the young man, Caleb McLaughlin, who we've all seen grown up in front of our eyes on Stranger Things as Lucas. The man or young man, now man, has a full on beard in this movie. He's great in the film, but I just love this cast. Also, shout out to RJ Siler who's such a great up and coming actor and he's I'll talk about a little bit more later I wish he was in the film and have more to do but I really love just seeing him on screen I love this collaboration that he has with LaCleve as well as James so I hope that he can lead James next movie because he's just such a fantastic actor but those were some characters that were supporting cast that I really enjoyed but the people that really stood out to me starting off with LaCleve Stanfield you have Omar C and I'll mention someone a little bit later but let's talk about LaCleve Stanfield field who personally I believe he is one of the most interesting and talented actors to me as he leads this film with such charisma but also he gets to show his great comedic timing in this film those scenes seeing him pretending to do miracles are so funny but again touching on his range as an actor seeing him playing the more serious moments with the passion in those eyes that just truly take you through his character's journey of self-discovery as we see him playing Clarence He's trying to prove that he can be something, that he can change his circumstances for himself and his family and just bring in so much groundedness to the story. Lakeith, like I said, one of my favorite actors, he's excellent in this film. Like he can do anything at this point and I will be there. He's that great of an actor to me. But also I got to give a shout out to the collaboration that like I mentioned earlier between Lakeith Stanfield and Samuel here. I think that it's outstanding. I'm really excited to see them continue to work together. But switching gears and talking about another performance that stood out to me and that is coming from Omar C. He's phenomenal in the supporting role. He almost kind of reminded me, I talked about a little bit earlier, do the right thing comparisons. He was kind of like a Radio Raheem-ish type of character, but he's also just a bad mother, you know what? He's fantastic. He has some of the more funnier moments in this film, but also some of the more intense moments that he just plays great in this film. But now there's one actor who... I've seen one trailer for this movie, and I don't remember seeing this actor in a trailer, but I'm, I'm talking about 
Benedict Cumberbatch, he has, and I won't spoil anything, but he has a particular character that he plays in this film, and there's no question about it, to me, one of the funniest scenes I've seen in a very long time, perfect casting, this will be one of the most iconic used memes of 2024, and I personally can never not see him in that character moving forward, like when you all see this film, if Benedict Cumberbatch one of the funniest moments I've seen in a long time. But getting into the story here, I really do feel like this film is for everyone. I think there's comedy you can enjoy, some romance, some action, some social commentary. But let's talk a little bit about the religious angle that this film has and how it subverts expectations, in my opinion. Now, I believe some people will probably be offended based on the subject matter, but I personally wouldn't frame this film as a religious movie because most of the film isn't really about Jesus at all. It's more about the people surrounding Jesus and the people that knew of him during that time. But I do think it does reframe the narrative of Jesus during that time in a very different light and allowing black people to be in the forefront, which I very much enjoyed. But there are moments in which we do see our characters' faith coming into question and their belief into something that's greater or bigger than themselves and seeing Clarence tackling that issue but also this really interesting conversation being had in the film about the difference between having knowledge and power to me was told in a very particular way and I enjoyed that element of the story for the most part. And lastly, I love the homages being paid in this film. As I mentioned earlier, whether it's the contemporary amalgamation of classics like like the Ten Commandments or Ben-Hur and throwing in a little bit of the Passion of the Christ, but also films that I grew up with and watched religiously, whether that's seeing recreations of scenes from like Belly or Friday or John Singleton's Boys in the Hood, but also seeing the friendship between Clarence and Elijah reminded me a little bit of Craig and Smokey from Friday, as well as their story kind of playing into they have to pay someone money, which reminded me a little bit of, you know, Big Worm and Craig having to pay Big Worm by the end of the day. So there's just a funness, a joy, a nostalgia factor that I really enjoyed about, again, playing to those classic kind of films that we saw back in the day, but also, like I said, the films when I grew up as a kid. I love the homages, the inspirations, and the tilting of the hat that we see in this film. And I cannot stress enough how fire the soundtrack is by James Samuel, who did compose this film, and just the way that his influence and music plays into this film lends itself to adding this swagger this confidence to the movie this film the soundtrack is full of bangers the score is incredible my favorite scene in this film involves a somewhat of a club dancing scene that soundtrack in that scene i can't wait to buy the soundtrack because it's absolutely fire so i just love how the music is a character within itself and it's one of my favorite characters because the music in this film is amazing but with all that being said the film isn't perfect it has its flaws transitioning into my criticism and starting off with a little bit of my nitpicks first i kind of alluded to it but i wanted a little bit more of rj i wish that he had more to do he somewhat feels limited in the role and I just wanted more from the character but again just a small nitpick but getting into the details of the things that really didn't work for me in this film starting off with there is a love story in the center of this film that I feel like it was a little bit out of place at points because we spend so much time on it and it didn't really have that much of a satisfying payoff for me but also speaking of relationships there is a brotherly relationship that I don't think is in a trailer but Lakeith his character Clarence does have a brother and that relationship relationship really didn't have as much of a payoff as that romantic relationship either like I kind of get the point of his brother and the story that they had there, but it just didn't really fit into the cohesive narrative of what they were trying to tell. So those are the things that stood out to me as far as like some negatives. But the biggest issue I have with this film, as we get into act one and act two, or as the film presents it, is told in three different books. And book one and two to me were, were best moments of the film. But as we got towards the back tail end of book two into book three, the film lags to me. The pacing has a little bit of issues, but more importantly, the tonal shifts in those books are very jarring. We go from a satire comedy with some dramatic moments, but it all felt natural to the story and always had a good punchline, but then when we get into book three, it's almost like it's just a certain shift and it becomes a very heavy hidden drama with social commentary that felt a little bit too on the nose for me. For example, like I said, book three is a heavy hard drama and it's a 180 from the beginning of the film into the middle of the film. 
And I get that book three is meant to make you feel uncomfortable and have something to say, but it just felt like it was too on the nose. Like we have a moment where it, it gets dark in the third act, and I won't spoil what that is, but there's a line that a character says, they're always taking our babies. And I and I get that line, especially coming from the black lens and then having something to say about stuff that's been going on for decades, but you know, in the last four, five, seven years or so, as far as the injustices within the police system and how they kind of look and, and prey upon black men, there's something to be said but it didn't really necessarily flow as well as far as what this story was trying to tell but then adding that social commentary just didn't flow well for me personally again I understand it's meant to make you feel uncomfortable and make you feel a certain way and evoke a certain emotion but it just wasn't executed as well in my personal opinion and it just kind of goes into that third act that book three in general to me was the weakest element of the film because the acting wasn't bad it's just a different movie and it's such a departure from the rest of the film and it just had too many bookend points like you feel like the film was going to end at certain points but it kept going and you felt that runtime in the third act and then just in general the third act was the weakest element and while I praise James and his style and his direction I felt the writing in this film at points especially again in that third act wasn't as defined as the harder they fall and overall the tone just wasn't as consistent so those are my main pros, my nitpicks, and my criticisms before I give you all my overall thoughts and my score and let you know if this film is worth checking out. I want to take this time to thank you all for making it to this point in the video. I really appreciate you. If you're having a good time, make sure you hit the thumbs up, share your thoughts in the comments, and also consider sharing this video, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Overall, James Samuel's The Book of Clarence is a captivating biblical tale that features cinematic elements which are highlighted by Samuel's innovative and instinctive storytelling style. Undoubtedly, the movie has a unique and smooth rhythm that sets itself apart, and the ensemble cast is impressive. Lakeith Stanfield and Omar C. deliver outstanding performances. Benedict Cumberbatch did an outstanding job in his role and provided a memorable moment in this film, and I will always associate him with that character. Now, unfortunately, the last half was the weakest part of the film because it totally felt disjointed, and it completely is a departure from the rest of the movie, and it just didn't work for me. But at the end of the day, this story involving Clarence trying to be the new Messiah, Jesus 2.0, and knowing the difference between power and knowledge through the lens of black culture was truly entertaining and highly enjoyable. I'm going to give the book of Clarence a 3.8 out of 5. And I recommend you all give it a watch. Again, I know there's going to be some people that's going to have preconceived notions like, oh, this is a religious film, the poke fun of religion. It's not. It's a satire on the commentary during that times with black culture, with references to those films I mentioned earlier. It has something to say. Sometimes it works better in the story than not, but overall, I was very entertained. I recommend you all give it a watch. And when you do, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What worked? What didn't work? What were some of your favorite moments? What did you think about Benedict Cumberbatch? What did you think about book one, two, and three? Which one of those were your favorite? Which one of those didn't work for you? Let's talk about it all in the comments below. You you all are awesome. I really appreciate you. If you had a good time, this is your first time here, consider sticking around and clicking this button here and subscribing to the channel, checking out some of my most recent reviews, check out my most recent review, and I'll catch you all on the next video.